what's that phrase they say? Something's hot. Something is hot. I don't know. Like all systems are go. What is that? <laughs> this is your wise neighbor, Claire. Uh, I don't know. Something's hot. I feel. I feel like the, I, I don't know. Weapons are hot. Weapons are hot. Weapons are hot. Yeah. Like, Not sure. Like on a battleship. Weapons are hot right now, people. Uh, the mic is hot. The mic's hot. We have a live <laughs> mic. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to In the Chaos. My name is Brad. That is Fat Man Zoom. The stock market's crazy and chaotic. We made it our mission to help you own it. It's Stock Watch Sunday. You know what it is. Fat Man Zoom, why don't we hit him up with the starting five? Starting five, Allen 316, Gus, Nikki B, Sean Dupuis, and Sean Ethier. You are our starting five. We got a lot of good stuff for you guys today. Welcome. Um, let me tease you with it. We'll do the thumbnail pose off. We'll keep it on this camera right here. I am going to take... Apple Event Monday. Apple Event Monday. Let's go, baby. <laughs> big news. Well, I don't know if it's big news, but Apple Event's always a good stuff for the stock. Yeah. We'll talk about how that's going. Uh, camera one, camera two. Two. Uh, let's do the top five stocks for the week. <laughs> and camera one is... Earnings preview. Let's go. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, we had earnings kickoff last week, but this week is really, really what we care about. This, yeah, the man. True. I feel like this week is the real kickoff to earnings. It is. It is. I mean, hey, we had a great start with the banks, though. Banks are awesome. Yeah. Banks are awesome. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to this week. We're going to give you uh, a, a preview of what we think. Uh, is to be expected for earnings season coming up. But, uh, man, I had a great day. Yeah, you went to the football game. How was that? Went to the football game, and everybody thought it was going to be close because, you know, we had uh, you got Lamar Jackson, and then you had, um, oh, I even forgot his name. Herbert. Herbert. Justin Herbert came in. One of the, two of the uh, hottest quarterbacks coming in. Thought it was going to be a shootout, and the Ravens defense just, showed up i mean secondary was just confusing them all over the place yeah uh chargers did not look good and i don't even know if they're that good i'll be honest with you yeah uh the defense played well um but i just don't know if they're that good and i think they got exposed so we'll see we'll see what happens but great game by the ravens they laid it down yeah you know what was crazy was uh you know, just looking up at the school board, the time of possession was wild. It was like the Ravens had almost 40 minutes time time of possession. Yeah. So that was like uh, the big exposure, I think, was the run game, obviously. And Ravens are really good at that. Yep. I'm telling you, they're ramping up Bell. Yeah. Until the yeah. end of the year. He got a tud today. Yeah, he did. They're, they're just getting him ready. If they don't use him in the playoff run, I'd be really surprised. Well, uh, he's a perfect asset for them. Um. Shoot, Latavius the, Murray. Yeah, he he walked Murray. off the field. I don't know if he uh, got badly injured or not, but uh, if he did, maybe maybe that opens the door for Le'Veon a little bit more. Yeah, I don't think I don't remember hearing that he was that there was anything serious. Okay, um, I think it was just precautionary. And honestly, I think if they have the ideal scenario is uh, Latavius and Le, Le'Veon. Yeah. I think Devontae Freeman would be like good trade bait. But I feel like those two guys are like a good fit for their offense. Yeah, Devontae Freeman's been pretty good in like the drop off, the dump off passes and stuff like that. Yeah, but when you got Le'Veon Bell, he's the best at it. Yes, like there's not even anybody close at it. So right. um, if you can get some trade bait for him, maybe shore up that defense a little bit. Yeah, I think that would be a good move for them. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, a lot of good games. Um, man, I'll tell you who's fun to watch. Kyler Murray is just fun to watch. Yeah. Like and he's got so many weapons, it's ridiculous how many weapons that guy has. But um, the dynamic quarterbacks have been fun to watch. You know, Lamar, Kyler, even Josh Allen's fun to watch. Yeah, guys gonna run around and to and toss it. Yeah, I mean Kyler Murray's just like he's just different. Yeah. He's different. I mean he, I mean I'd say probably Russell Wilson is the closest to him. He's just like yeah. that guy on the move is. I mean, other than Russell Wilson, I don't know who's him and. I guess Patrick Mahomes, I would put him in the top three of throwing on the move. He just, he's like 
I don't know. He's just so accurate. You it's know, ridiculous. It's funny you mentioned that, the throwing on the move and everything. That's Are you getting about to give me a Lamar Jackson stat? No, it's a baseball skill. Oh, oh. Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray could have both played professional baseball, but chose football instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot, Kyler of, was drafted. a lot of NFL quarterbacks were, were in that boat. Yeah. For sure. Um, how is that throwing on the move, though, for baseball? So, especially for like infielders and stuff, if you're running to pick the ball up, oh, yeah, char- yeah. charging the ball and throwing it, yeah. Um, you got to be on point. What position was Russell Wilson? He was, uh, I want to say maybe pitcher. Oh, okay. I think he was a pitcher. Um, Kyler Murray, was he a pitcher or an infielder? Uh, I think he was, I don't know. It's a good question. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah, I can definitely see that if you're an infielder for sure. Yeah. Especially like a shortstop. Um, but yeah, that was uh it was it was some good games to watch today. Um, but anyways, what's more fun to watch is gonna be earnings this week. <laughs> so guys, we're gonna Making run money. through we're gonna run through earnings. Uh just sort of give a, give you guys what the earnings we're watching. And we have a lot to really go over and just kind of discuss our sentiments around earnings, what we're looking for, what we expect to see. Um, we have Brad's top five stocks will be more towards the end. So make sure you guys stick around as far as that's concerned. I'm switching up the order a little bit. Um, I want to, I have a couple of, um, I want to say rapid fire questions, but a couple of general questions for you, uh, that I wanted to get into. So guys, make sure you like, hit that like button. Um, and if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe before we get into the main topics. Um, I haven't asked you in a while, but. High conviction, your top three conviction stocks right now. Penn National, Airbnb, and OIH, really just anything energy related. I and, could I could put my marathon oil in there instead, okay. of, instead of an ETF. We'll put marathon. Um high oh, I don't know if I should ask you this question because I feel like it's part of your top five. All right. <laughs> it's probably a part of your top five. We'll find out later. But earnings, like highest conviction, like where you think these stocks this week are going to crush it and then perform well post earnings. Um, I'll go with this. I have a biggest surprise. Okay. I think the biggest surprise could be Snapchat. Snap. Oh, really? Yeah. I think the biggest surprise could be Snap. I don't think there's a lot of people or a lot of investors expecting anything mind blowing, but I think that Snap's just been still under the radar. I mean, last quarter it was kind of iffy, and even the quarter before that. But I think leading into this one, especially as we've seen hospitality and businesses really start to ramp up their openings, I think we could see um, some positive uh, revenue from them and a pretty decent outlook from Snap. Okay. So we have a couple of stocks that. Uh a couple of airlines this week. We have United and we have uh, Southwest. Yes. Um, you know, there's been some negative news around airlines, and, and we're obviously bullish on airlines for the long term, but how important do you think these earnings are for the short short term and for the sentiment? Um, I don't know if anybody's going to be shocked by the earnings that come out. You know, it was really encouraging to see that like Delta, the Delta CEO was saying that, you know, the demand is is 70. Was it what did I say? 76 percent somewhere yeah. around there in the vicinity yeah. of what it was back in 2019. So pre pandemic. So we're getting back there. And I've made mention that I think that we're going to see the the big ramp up leading into the holiday season. we got Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, all those holidays. And so I think and even people might be traveling for New Year's now. I mean, it was wasn't it last year that Times Square wasn't really open or the year before. So from the year before, either either uh, just very limited last year. Yeah. So regardless, I think that we're going to see increased travel during the holiday season, and so uh, I think that that's what the airlines are going to be most looking forward to. I have calls in Southwest all the way out to uh, December, so I'm I'm betting on that. I'm not so sure that the earnings are going to be the catalyst that kind of kicks things off. Well, uh, uh, let me piggyback that because. You know, Southwest is having a lot of challenges. And the yeah. more I speak to people that have been flying, especially recently, it's been a miserable experience for them and they just don't have flights. So demand is great. But if you don't have the flights, if we've talked about the staffing issues. We've talked about the ca- cancellations. How do they address that? Uh, they got to find people to hire. That That's the big the big issue is is pilots. And that that's all the research and, and stuff that I've been seeing, it's been pilots and staff. Yeah. So if we're about to go into the busy season, yeah. 
Are you at all concerned for them not? I mean, they can't even keep up now. Are you concerned at all during the holiday season that they won't be able to ramp that up? Because you still got to train people. You still got to, you know, get yeah. them going. It's certainly a concern. I yeah. mean, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, uh, dismiss that at all. Um, but, you know, the Delta the CEO of Delta and his earnings call made, made, uh, was, uh, made everybody aware that they're aware of it and they're working yeah. on it. I would imagine that they're not the only company that's making efforts to try to make sure that they're covered for that. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely a cause for concern. My, my hunch is, is that they'll try to, they'll figure that out. And I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Yeah. One of the things that's going to be interesting is how they, how they feel that growth. Um, because, you know, they could have to incentivize staff and then does that eat into their profit margin with their, with their labor costs? Right. Certainly remains to be seen. We will keep you guys apprised of how that's looking. Certainly I have Delta. You obviously have Southwest. So we'll see how, how that goes. Um, Steve King says Delta is so much better, so much better flying experience, plus not forcing employees to get vaccinated. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people love Delta. I think the convenience and the customer service of Southwest international exposure is, is unmatched um, for Southwest. But there are certainly advantages over Delta, and especially one of the main reasons why um, I, you know, I feel confident about getting into it. Yeah. Um, but both should be fine. Both should do do great. So we'll see what happens. Um, so. Let's get into one of the first topics that I wanted to discuss, which is Apple's event. So Apple has an event tomorrow, Monday, um, in which they're rolling out the MacBook Pro. It's sort of an equipment rollout. Um, and I'll tell you what, they've done for a product that's been around for a while, like they've done a really good job of continuing to grow. I mean, especially with COVID and the pandemic, um, their hardware sales actually did really well outside of the iPhone, which obviously crushed it. Um, but talk about the Apple event. Um, you know, how do you think anything's going to come of it? Do you think it's it's sort of a non-issue or do you think that um, there's an opportunity for this to move after the event? I think it's usually a non-issue. Historically, we don't really see Apple outperform unless they come out with something like that's super mind blowing. But I don't know if there's any real high expectations this time around, just kind of like the last one. Um, so, you know, what I think what's more telling is the correction that Apple's had all the way down to that 138, 139 support. And we've seen a pretty decent bounce. All of all of tech has had a really decent bounce starting last week. And I mean, we look at futures right now and they are rocking and rolling. So there's reason to believe that we could continue to see Apple and some of the other big tech stocks keep rolling. Um, so I think that's more of a tell than, than this Apple event. We just don't usually see any kind of reaction, uh, from investors as far as that's concerned. Um, do you, does it matter that it sort of was beaten down a little bit? Not what is, is there earnings next week? Yeah. So they will be next week, not this week. Okay. So if they have earnings next week, obviously they'll make announcement, um, for equipment, sorry, for, for their MacBook. I don't know if they're releasing any other products, um, for some reason, I thought maybe the AirPods, um, but that remains to be seen. We'll certainly be going live for it tomorrow, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time to discuss our reaction on what they released. Yep. But yeah, I mean, we kind of know what comes of these events. However, I will say that if the market turns around, given this event, um, I, you know, and given that Apple's lagged a little bit, could be the recipe to get it moving into earnings next week. Yeah. Um, wouldn't be surprised over that. Technically, where do you see the next resistance at for Apple? Yeah. So for Apple, if we take, let's take a look here. If we look at the daily chart right now, we, as, as I mentioned before, this came down to that 138 support area and it's continued to hold up really, really well. So right now, uh, you know, between Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week, we started to see this bounce back quite quite decently and i think that 145 kind of really where it closed that on friday it's going to be that next resistance although given the way that futures are reacting right now i would imagine that we probably open higher than that so if we do next stop's going to be around 147 which is the 50-day moving average and then after that it's marching its way to all-time highs remember guys we talked about apple underperforming the s&p 500 despite it being close to its all-time highs and it, it corrected around eight nine percent coming down to that 138 139 area so uh i think that the bounce here should be uh pretty tremendous and, and that goes for amazon as well we saw amazon go up a hundred dollars a share yesterday on uh, friday so 
all these I think are going to have pretty decent bounces going into next week. Yeah, it'll be exciting. We'll keep an eye on it. Um, and obviously we're forever bullish on Apple, but, <laughs> um, let's get into the earnings. So we'll break down sort of each day. We'll talk about who has which earnings and then, um, any ones that stand out. So there's really nothing Monday that I would say really moves the needle. So we can just jump right into Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, pre-market Johnson and Johnson, Halliburton, if you care, P and G Procter and Gamble. Um, those are pre-market after hours. This is when it starts Netflix United, um, intuitive surgical. If you guys are into that stock, um, those are probably the big ones that we would be looking at. Um, you know, I guess Johnson and Johnson yeah. stands out to me. Uh, and certainly Netflix United, we talked about the airlines, but Netflix. Um, so what's, what are you looking at as far as Tuesdays and sort of, what are you excited about? Um, I'm excited about Netflix and we're getting into that for the top five stocks. Hint, hint. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I'm definitely excited about Netflix. And as, as much as people may scratch their head about this, Halliburton is definitely one that I have my eye on. Oil services, a company, um, natural gas, oil, all that. Um, they're going to crush it, I think. I mean, with the rise in oil prices and all that, energy costs, we're just getting into the wintertime. I think that their outlook there is going to be good. They have tons of cash on hand. So imagine, I imagine that we could see an increase in dividends, perhaps, or at least some sort of buyback might take place. So... I think that Halliburton's actually one to definitely watch for. It could be flying on the radar that not a lot of people are really paying attention to. Now it is up 34% over the last three weeks. Yeah. Um, is it you who says that you think it could keep going higher? Yes. Uh, what's their PE? Let me see. 160. <laughs> it is 160. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So pretty high uh, PE there. I, I, I would say, that there's still room for this to run. Um, let me look at, let me pull up the chart just to kind of give perspective. And this has kind of been my stance on um, energy as a whole. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I know we got a couple more days to go. But if we pull up the chart here, I'm going to pull up the weekly. Let you guys take a look uh, on what I'm seeing. So we take a look at the price of oil and even where natural gas is, we're seeing energy costs that are high. Uh, seven year highs, close to a decade highs. And if we go back to around 2015, 2014, which is where we saw uh, oil prices uh, at these levels before, you look at something like Halliburton and it was at $50 a share, um, even as high as $75 a share. And so we're still well below that. We're just approaching the 200 day moving average on Halliburton. And, you know, this isn't one that I think that people really look at because it's not that sexy stock, right? It's not Tesla. It's not Apple. It's not Amazon. But there's still lots of value here. And I think that there's the upside potential here. It's pretty great. Yeah. Um, intuitive surgical. I said that's one interesting for me. And we don't talk about it a lot, but I've been aware for of it for some time. But that's the DaVinci product. So that's basically the remote surgical tools. Mm -hmm. So you can operate... Uh, Actually, Hopkins has one of the couple in the world as far as that you can uh, publicly view. But um, basically, you can remotely do surgery, and the, their machines are incredible. I'll say the interesting thing about that is you've talked about, you know, COVID and um, certain surgeries and like seeing a rise in, in the medical side of things. Elective surgeries. Yeah, yeah. elective surgeries. And so we'll see. Um, I think they stand to benefit as well, and I think they could put – possibly have a move going in um after these earnings to the rest of the year so i think it should be a promising earnings for them yeah i mean and it's corrected a little bit i mean it still had a monster year but it's corrected a little bit um over the last several weeks so it may be primed for the next move up all right so then we have wednesday pre-market verizon asml winnebago um I would say those are the main ones I'd bring up. And then after close, Tesla, big dog Tesla, yeah. uh, Sands, IBM, one I would be looking at. Those are the main ones that stand out from there. Uh, thoughts on Wednesday? CSX. CSX is going to be a big one on Wednesday. Um, one of the big reasons why is because the transports have kind of uh, been overlooked as well. Even though they've had pretty strong moves, uh, I think uh, CSX, Union Pacific, uh, some of the other transport services, if demand continues to remain where it's at, 
these companies are going to continue to rock and roll. And even though the bigger names are there, those are the ones that are going to get the attention. Something like CSX is going to be, again, one of those uh, stocks that I think probably uh, crushes it going into earnings, and their outlook is probably going to be pretty fantastic. We take a look at the chart here, and it closed at a resistance uh, right around $34. We break up over that going into next week. I think that we could see a huge move, especially if they come out with good earnings and a positive outlook. Yeah, um, for me, you know, I've talked about ASML. ASML has proprietary technology, which I think from the, se you know, we're talking about a semiconductor uh, manufacturer. So you benefit as the whole industry actually moves. And it's almost like a Boeing for the airline industry. They should be even a little bit ahead of the game as far as um, revenue, I'm not revenue returning, they already have revenue. But as that demand releases, continued revenue moving up. Um, and because they have proprietary technology, their certain equipment they have, they can only produce, which gives them a huge competitive advantage. I think there's huge upside still for ASML. I'm excited about that. The question for me is Verizon. Um, you know, Verizon and AT&T have really been beaten down. You're talking about they have a good yield, and I know it's a value stock, but it's time for Verizon to kind of turn around. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I've got my eye on it just to see is this sort of the beginning of the turnaround. The one thing that we're interested to see if they say, do they give us any inclination about iPhone sales and any sort of um, any sort of log jam as far as that's concerned? And then the other one, outside of Tesla, which we'll get into later, but IBM, IBM to me is uh, has a likelihood of of being a turnaround story as any stock really reminds me of Microsoft and how they tried to turn it around and were successful at it. IBM's trying to do the same thing. And so with each passing earnings, hopefully get an inclination of the new CEO, how he's, how he's really moving towards that. But I feel really um, hopeful about IBM's long-term strategy. And this chart looks incredible too. I mean, really primed for a breakout here as well. Uh, coming up to uh, the 147 resistance, 140, yeah, 147 resistance, you know, a little bit of a cup and handle that we could be seeing here on the daily chart over the last couple of weeks. So yeah, really, really good looking chart as well. So then next day, Thursday, before market open, pre-market, AT&T, Nucor, American Airlines, Crocs, Southwest, Valero, that should be a really good morning. Um, and then after hours, a Thursday is going to be solid. Yeah. Snapchat, Snap Inc., uh, Intel, Chipotle, Sam Adams. I'm excited for that one. Um, eh, maybe. Yeah, I think that's probably the big ones. Um, Thursday should be a fun day. It's going to be a really fun day. I'm pretty excited about Crocs to see what they, they do. Yeah. Um, I think out of that whole list, I think that's the one that I'm most excited about, even though I did mention that Snap, I think, ends up surprising a lot of people. Yeah, and, and Chipotle's been an absolute monster. Oh, yeah, it's um, dog, bro. You know, I'm going to – I'm I'm really, for me, the biggest stock of the entire week is Sam just because of how important opportunity is for me. Sam Adams, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a move one way or another, and really the question they have to answer is have they found an – Either have they addressed the hard seltzer and are they going to continue to try to regain market share or do they have another solution to drive revenue? I would prefer the latter. And if they can drive revenue in a different angle and just say, hey, we have an answer. But if they don't have a great earnings, this could get ugly for them and it could get ugly for me because I'm in leaps for Sam. Aren't we supposed to hear about Mountain Dew sales from them too? Uh, I don't know if we'll actually have sales on that quarter, but they have that Mountain Dew partnership. So the hard Mountain Dew. Yeah. I so, can't remember uh, if they were piloting that yet or not. I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's actually hit sales for this quarter, but we should, we may have an idea of, um, demand as far as that can, that's concerned. Yeah. Regardless, this has definitely been intriguing. I mean, it's been it's down, what, over 60 65% since its highs and uh, the last uh, quarterly earnings that were just abysmal. The expectation here is going to be pretty rough, too. And that's usually the thing. And I don't want to give too much away because I will be talking about this in my top five stocks uh, because I have a lot uh, to, to, to give insights on. But what I will say is, is that usually when you see everybody being pessimistic on something, not every time, but 
many times, it usually ends up being that uh, you, sh- you should maybe take a closer look. Yeah. Everybody has the same sentiment about something. And uh, going the, going against the flow can sometimes work in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. And so looking at Friday, one of your favorites, watch list. Uh, oh, what do we call it? Um, recurring appearance on the watch list, Cleveland Cliffs. Yeah. American Express. Um, Honeywell. Honeywell has been a monster. Yes. A really quiet killer. Um, those are the ones we have on tap. As far as Friday is concerned. Yeah, Honeywell. What are we doing on Honeywell here? Let's see. Look at the chart here. And uh, it's actually been kind of sideways over the last two quarters. But, yeah, still crushes it. Um, their last quarter, they they annihilated earnings and expectations are still pretty high. This one's going to benefit from a lot of things, you know, namely the infrastructure bill. Once that starts to go through, I'm sure that they'll continue to benefit, too. Pretty decent move up above the 200-day on Friday and then leading up to the 50 day probably ends up happening this week. And I would imagine that we might see a pretty decent run going into earnings on Friday. Yeah. So guys, there you have it. We are live Monday through Thursday, 3.30 PM Eastern time. So this week we'll be doing the, the live earnings reaction. So once the market closes, we'll be actually reporting on the earnings per share of the revenue. We'll give our predictions and we'll look at the reaction. So make sure you hit that notification bell, like, like and subscribe. Um, it'll alert you when we go live. But we're going to be live for all these things, um, and I'm excited for it. So each day we'll kind of revisit the stocks for that day and d- d- dig a little deeper into those stocks. Let us know, those of you guys who are live right now, which one are you the most excited about? I know Housekeeping said Crocs is exciting. Uh, Alexa, Crocs or Snap. A lot of people saying Crocs. Um <laughs> Looks looks like a lot of people are excited about that. Um, we'll see. Housekeeping says Sam is are at their bottom. Their ceiling is so good. I don't know. Maybe he's at his bottom. Maybe not. We'll certainly uh, get an inclination this week yeah. uh, and just update you as far as um, the hard Mountain Dew is not till early 2022. Okay. So it has not been released yet. Got it. Cool. Um, all right. Tesla, of course. I mean, it has to be the most exciting Tesla. Uh, with that being said, if you have, you ready to get into these top five stocks? Let's do it, my man. All right, guys. So every week, I ask Brad to bring five stocks that are on his watch list. Not buy list, watch list. Stocks he's got his eye on. Obviously, this week's earnings. Um, normally, it's just any catalyst coming up. So let's d- dive right into it. Brad, what is the first stock you have? Um, so the first stock for me this week is going to be none other than Sam, uh, but the Boston beer company, we, as we all know, we just kind of recently discussed was that Sam, uh, has had a a really tough go at it. It's down 60, 65% from its highs after an abysmal quarter last quarter and a really poor outlook. Um, some, some interesting notes here. They're expected to post quarterly earnings of a $4.60 per share, uh, which represents a year over year change of actually a loss of 25%, almost, Mm -hmm. almost 25%, not quite, but pretty much there. Revenues are expected to be around 4.96, uh, million, uh, up 8.8% from a year ago. If they surprise or make any kind of mention of, uh, you know, hospitality really coming back and, and, and bringing sales back for them, I think that that's going to be interesting. And one thing to note here, if investors are expecting a huge, uh, you know, a miss or a huge letdown and the stock continues to come go down lower as we lead into earnings, but then they come in and surprise us with something like that. I think that Sam could be a good one to watch for it. You know, you take a look at the chart here, as I mentioned, a huge drop off. So, you know, risk reward is actually good here. Fat Man Zoom, you always talk about uh, uh, asymmetrical trades. I think that this one could be a great one. You know, even just getting in where it closed at, at 511, uh, and then maybe getting putting a stop in around 496, 497, I think probably makes some sense. Uh, so I think Sam uh, could potentially surprise a lot of people, especially with so much negative sentiment surrounding around this. And it may be one to, uh, you know, take a, cl- take a close, closer look at this week. Yeah. It, it, to me, it seemed like a picture perfect options leaps opportunity. Um, you know, you talk about a stock that has huge upside. I don't think it's going anywhere. So looking at the t- long term perspective, but I don't know short term what's going to happen. Leaps just makes a lot of sense um, because who knows? It could go down a little bit more. But do I think it's going to be above 500 a year from now? 
Yes. And we're already seeing in the payrolls, um, hospitality is finally leading the sector as far as like, yeah. you know, j- jobs coming back as far as that's concerned. That's been a challenge for hospitality. So if we can get hospitality back where it needs to be, Boston Beer Company stands to benefit. And if we can get ahead of that trend, um, you're all better for it. So it'll when it does decide to reverse, it's going to come back quickly, I think, because overall, it's a great company, obviously a great product. I've talked about the fall is a great time for Sam in general. So I think there's two things at play here, or sort of both ways you can look at it. One is, I'm wondering if the CEO just tempers expectations just because it's such a horrible quarter last quarter. Yeah. And so is he just more cautious as far as outlook's concerned? Or because it's been it was such a horrific quarter last quarter, is there more optimism and do they raise outlook? There's no doubt in my mind that um they're going to perform really well leading into the end of the year, especially because seltzer is more of a summer product anyway. So if you were worried about that, it's a summer product. Yeah. And so I'm interested to, to hear about the outlook and how that plays. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, very interesting to see how this whole stock reacts and we're going to be live for that. That's uh, after hours play, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we after hours on Thursday. So uh, make sure you guys are sticking around for that one. Uh, my next one is, is going to be very interesting as well, Fat Man Zoom. Mm-hmm. If I told you that uh, the projected reporting, uh, uh, projected uh, earnings uh, per share on this particular stock was two dollars twenty one cents, which re- represents year over year growth of five thousand four hundred twenty five percent, but their PE ratio was still at twelve. Would you believe me? <laughs> that feels like Crocs. It's not Crocs. Is it? Is it's, it? Is it? It's Cleveland Cliffs. Oh, okay. It's Cleveland Cliffs. Uh, they have earnings on Friday, and uh, the company said on October 11th. We talked about this, the acquisition they had for their scrap metal company, and the name just uh, Ferris Processing. Um, uh, it, that's another good acquisition for them. Uh, they have just really started to kill it. And obviously the rise in materials certainly helps them out. Uh, if you guys don't know Cleveland Cliffs, they're a steel maker. Um, some people kind of confuse them. They, they don't necessarily, they're not known for mining iron ore. They're the more like flat steel and rolling steel and all that good stuff. So really great company. Uh, they just haven't had the love because it just hasn't been one of those sexy ones that a lot of people look at. Obviously value is taking a backseat over the last decade. So we're looking at value stocks uh, that have been beaten down that have super low PEs. Uh, this is one, even though it's had some pretty, a pretty decent run over the last 12 months. I think that this continues to rock and roll. So they have earnings again, two dollars twenty-one cents per share. You can take a look at the chart here, and it actually looks pretty solid. You can see that I have some calls on here as well, um, and it just briefly fell out of its trend, and it started to work right back into it. I think that we could potentially see, you know, a nice little run going into earnings on Friday on this too. Given the way that futures are looking, I think that's certainly possible. Uh, watch for this to move up above twenty-two sixty-five, which is the fifty-day moving average, and maybe try to test retest the top of this ascending channel here on Cleveland Cliffs. Yeah, that's what I'm interested in potentially getting into, but certainly with the channel, it looks like a good opportunity to try out. So um, I love Friday earnings. I, I just really do. I mean, I prefer Thursday because yeah. then you can see the move, but Friday, I I mean, that's it's going to be exciting. Obviously, those are pre-market. Um, so to me, it seems like a great one to potentially play the run up and maybe a breakout. We'll see how it goes. Earnings always 50, 50. So yeah. we'll see what's Ab- next. Absolutely. So, uh, before I get into the next one, guys, first of all, I need to hit the thumbs up button. I certainly would appreciate it. If you guys hit the like button to show support, but if you're enjoying some of these stocks that we're showing you that are worth watching, uh, I'd encourage you to check out, check out uh, the join button next to subscribe. If you want to become part of the chaos crew, join the channel. You get a watch list from us every single day gets into great detail on, uh, the stocks we're watching and why we're watching them. Not only that, but you also get access to trade alerts, my portfolio, as well as uh, the our Discord group, all kinds of other good stuff, and it's super cheap. I mean, it starts at $4.99 a month. You can't get any better than that. We provide all kinds of value just for a small amount of money to help support the channel and the studio you see around you. But Fat Man Zoom, the next one that I'm watching is Netflix. Netflix has earnings on, uh, what do we say, Tuesday? Mm-hmm. And uh, this will be interesting. And you brought this up. You brought up brought up a pretty good point on Netflix uh, last week when we were just talking about not necessarily about earnings, but Squid Game. Yeah. Bloomberg came out with an article, uh, uh, a news. Uh, they were talking about the 111 fans that they had, 111 million fans. Sorry, that Squid Game has. Mm-hmm. I know this is just one show, right? 
In the but, first 28 days. Yeah, first 28. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. They gave that show a valuation of $900 million. Wow. That's incredible. $900 million. And obviously, Netflix has been one of the outperformers in the fangs uh, as of recent. Shout out Fat Man Zoom calling that one out uh, over the over the uh, the summertime. At, when that got beaten down, it was the worst performing fang stock in the summer. <laughs> and now it's the best performing stock going into yeah. the fall. You know, more... Moreover, I think that earnings are going to be really positive here. And we've talked about this. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the more that we start to see shows come back, we've talked about some of our favorite shows. Um, and so I think that this is going to be something that even though it's gone up a lot, I think there's plenty of room for this to continue to go up. Yeah. A couple of points I want to make. First off, uh, side note, I just watched, um, it's on Apple TV, CSEE. Yeah, it's that movie, it's that show with Jason Momoa and David Bautista. Oh yeah, yeah, that dude is such a good looking man. Jason Momoa. Yeah. Um, it was. He's a beast. It was awesome. If you like Glass Kingdom, it's it's kind of in the same vein as that. Okay. It's sick. I binge watched two seasons over in the three days. It's ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> um, here's what I'll say about Squid Game. Let me give some context. 111 million. Over the first 28 days, second place on that list was Bridgerton with 86 million. Yeah. Blew it out of the water. Numbers blew it out of the water. So to give you guys some perspective, that's what we're dealing with as far as Squid Game's concerned. And um, I re- there was an article out that kind of talked about how this sort of opens up for all streaming and, you know, just the cost of production internationally is far cheaper yes. than if you try to do it at home. So this bodes well for companies like Disney, Netflix as well. But here's the other thing I'll say, which we haven't heard people talk about yet, but I would bet anything I have that this is becoming, a, this will become a topic of conversation for Netflix. Online gaming Netflix just uh, this year just started talking about basically they're entering into online gaming. Right. Gaming. Is this not a perfect scenario where like their best shows they can turn into games? Squid Game, the game. Oh yeah. You parlay this nine hundred million dollar asset. How much money could you make off a game? Arguably, you could probably make more, and that's perfect for yeah. an actual video game. So. I can't be like the only one thinking about this idea. I've got to imagine Netflix had this in mind when they thought about online games, but these are logical. Like you have the proprietary rights for these company, these uh, shows, and then you can create games around it. It just seems like sort of the next evolution of streaming services and taking the titles that work well and then turning them into games. Squid game as a game would be (laughs) awesome. Squid game, the game. Yeah, it would be sick. So you think about the value of this, and that costs nothing. Like, when you think about it, um, because there's no actors, there's no nothing, like, you already have the licensing rights to create a game, and that can last. If that hits, it can last for a very long time. So huge upside. I love that stock. Yeah, taking a look at the chart here, if this does have a little bit of a pullback, watch for that to take place around 620. And if it can't hold that area, it probably is more likely that it comes back to retest around 616. But, man... This definitely looks like a potential breakout here. I think that if it, we can get this up above 650, then then Netflix could really start the rip. And one of the catalysts could be those earnings that come out Tuesday after hours. My next one, uh, Fat Man Zoom, is going to be Southwest. Now, I, I put Southwest in here, but really it could be any airline. Um, any, any of the big ones that we like, Delta, Southwest, United, they all have earnings this week. Or no, so Delta already had theirs, but United Southwest, uh, and I, don't, I think American Airlines might be next week. So uh, American Airlines is my least favorite, but you could take your pick with those. I, I think that Southwest, obviously, it's had a rough go of it. Uh, there have been some hiring issues and that sort of thing, but the one thing that you can't take away from it is demand. And I think the the labor issues, the labor shortages, um, are a fixable problem. And I think is when they come when they can solve that problem. I think that's what where where southwest will will be fine and some of the other airliners as well will be fine um as long as demand continues to stay stick around which it's not going away anytime soon but for for the foreseeable future so southwest i think is going to be one to certainly watch for what i'm looking for on their earnings is can i give us an outlook have they been able to rectify the situation have they been able to um solve some of the issues that we experienced over the last couple of weeks and are they actually prepared for 
uh, the holiday season. I think that they, I, I would think they'd have to come up with some sort of solution. And if they don't, then Southwest could have a rough week, but I'm betting on the fact that they do have, uh, a solution in the works and they're going to solve this problem. It came down uh, and tested that 50 day moving average and held just, just right at it on uh, Friday. And so I think that uh, we could potentially see a bounce, maybe leading into earnings themselves. Certainly after earnings could be very telling for Southwest as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think as long as you know, both sides of it, just being prepared the Southwest, these are actually the situations that we love. You're, you have demand. This is not different than the semiconductor issue, right? Like your lack of success really has nothing to do with you and more macro factors. And so, you know, eventually the hiring will be figured out, uh, you know, and Southwest is a good company in general. I feel bad for the new CEO. Not only did you have some big shoes to fill uh, with Gary Kelly leaving, but now you're dealing with this issue right at the beginning. So not a great start for their new CEO. However, Southwest is just going to be, is going to be just fine and look for them to sort of create some optimism around staffing. Cause that's going to be what a lot of the questions are going to be about is all these cancellations. Like, are we going to, what are you doing to address those? Yeah. It's going to be big. It's going to be big. So, uh, that is the, uh, stock number four, stock number five, fat man zoom is going to be nothing other than Crocs. Crocs is on uh, number five on the on the list, and I know that it seems to be a fan favorite. It sounds like a lot of you guys are in it as well. Uh, put a put a, a comment uh, down below if you're in Crocs or if you like Crocs. Uh, if you have a, a collection of them, let us know what you got. But Crocs has done really well over the last year. Mm-hmm. Here's an interesting stat: they've outperformed sales over Nike and Under Armour in the last year. I mean, I've been waiting for you to come around in Crocs. And I mean, all I'm saying is, yeah. <laughs> it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, um, you know, not only that, the, the growth story is what I think is a little bit mind-blowing. But they, you combine the growth story on top of the fact that they're reinvesting in, in uh, their investors. They're buying stock back. We, we heard yeah. in their last investor meeting, they're buying $500 million uh, worth of shares back. Maybe that even increases, but this earnings is definitely going to be interesting because we've heard so many problems with supply chains. Are they going to have enough uh, inventory to be able to sustain demand leading into the holiday season? Um, You know, I actually just went on their website today uh, and was just kind of poking around and it looked like there was a lot that was sold out. So can we hear from them? Are they going to be able to take care of that problem? Is there any issue with that or not? Uh, And, uh, you know, we saw that Levi, uh, Levi companies was actually prepared for that. Um, and is, is, uh, Crocs going to actually be prepared, prepared for that now, given the fact that this is a company that's experienced explosive growth before, as far as a trending, uh, type of, uh, I don't know, shoe or, or clothing or retail, uh, product, uh, that I would think that th- they've, they've, uh, this isn't their first rodeo in this in this uh, this issue. So I think that they'll probably be fine. Looking at the stock itself, it um, looks like it's been bouncing back pretty well. And I think that we could see a pretty decent run up in the earnings on Crocs on Thursday morning. So we get up above the 50 day moving average and then back up above 147 and 148 area. I think that Crocs could potentially have a breakout. Those earnings that we see from them could be the catalyst that maybe sends this to all time highs this week. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I talked about how you can make the argument that it's a better, it, it's, it's a better stock to be in the Nike and it could potentially be a better brand than Nike. Yeah. When you look over the next 10 years, I know it sounds crazy because Nike's just been such a huge part of our life. I'm still incredibly bullish on Nike, Yeah, but how they're running their business and how they're executing pretty phenomenal when you look at their earnings. However, Brad, the one thing I will say is I, I'm not as optimistic. The past two earnings, I've been extremely bullish on Crocs. I'm not as optimistic going into this because there is a possibility to talk about supply chain issues. That wouldn't surprise anybody. I just worry that the the bar is set really high now. And for them, at some point, you become like a Tesla-Apple situation where like we just – we're just not, we're just impossible to, to surprise you. And so I think we're getting close to that territory. Um, but as housekeeping says, if they announce supply chain issues, if this drops, I'm going to scoop, scoop a lot of it. I'm in that boat where like, 
It's in an interesting spot. It could go down to 115. It could drop. Um, as much as it could create new all-time highs, I think it's right in that middle ground. And this is as much of a coin flip as any earning stock, even if they beat, yeah. even if they beat, because we expect them to beat. But the rate of growth is going to be my question. What are their expectations in the holiday season? But if they don't have supply chain issues, it's going to have a monster, monster um, outlook as far as obviously the winter time, the holiday season, and moving into next year. This is just an all around dominant product. And you just, they do one. This is the example of like, you do something really, really well. Yeah. And there's just, I don't know where the ceiling is on this stock. Gross margins. Six, 61%. It's crazy. Operating margin is 30. Um, both better than uh, Nike and Under Armour, by the way. Uh, the other thing is Nike's uh, PE is 41. Crocs is 13.9. Yeah. So, um, I hear you. I definitely think that there's something uh, to be said as far as how much this has gone up uh, and, and uh, you know, the growth story and the supply chain issues, which, you know, I certainly had brought up too. But man, uh, to think that this, you know, um, can't keep going up. If you're in the camp that says that it can't keep going up, uh, then, you know, take a closer look because I think that there's potential for this to actually continue to go higher regardless because, you know, you look you look at the comps uh, to, uh, you know, Under Armour, Nike and what they're doing and, it's definitely a compelling story for sure. Yeah, and then the the good news is it's it's cooled off going into earnings, so that's promising going yeah. into earnings. Yeah. Um, and so that's something that you know if you're looking at earnings, that could be a potential good look. But I mean, make no mistake about it. If this thing sells off, I'm in. Like I'm in. It's just I mean, another great leaps opportunity stock. Right? When you talk about leaps, that's one that's great for it. So yeah. Um, Good list, man. That's good stuff. I, I mean, I, but I will say, how can you not put Tesla on the top five? That was the obvious choice. Oh, man. I mean, they're going to crush it. And I think, I mean, I just think that this, this is, I'm really optimistic about Wednesday. And I actually do think. It's Fat Man Zoom's pick of the week. It's going to keep going. Fat Man Zoom's pick of the week is Tesla. Here's the, here's the crazy part, right? Um, let's take a look at this guys. So I'm fire. The, the chart is breaking out. Okay. The, I told you guys, what was it last week? Oh, we don't need that anymore. Let's just get rid of that. Um, I told you guys last week during last stock watch Sunday that this is the most organized that I've seen Tesla in a very long time. Yeah. Just this ascending channel is remarkable looking and, uh, it's breaking out of this channel. We could see a clear breakout here. And I would imagine that we see this run into Wednesday. Uh, so this breakout could be monstrous. That being said, Fat Man Zoom, I think it does pose a risk holding through earnings if it makes this kind of move. I have no doubt that they will more than likely beat earnings and they should give us a pretty decent outlook. Obviously, they'll make mention of some of the supply chain issues as far as chip shortages and that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, what was it? Hyundai made mention that the worst could be behind us. So I'm yeah. sure that, that Elon could make mention of something like that too. So there's definitely some... Well, Elon won't be on this call. Oh, that's right. Elon won't be on that call. But anyways, in the yeah. report, in the report. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> I think, um, you know, there's definitely a lot of tailwinds for the stock. Uh, if this gets too hot leading in the earnings, though, then that's when it starts to become a little bit risky. Yeah. Um, I would, I mean, I would agree with you. I'd, I'd be hard pressed to say, to get into this if I wasn't already in it. Obviously, I'm already in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd be fine just waiting. And, and it's shown that it could sell off. I think that's the easy sort of speculative position is like, it's going to sell off afterwards. It's, it seems obvious, but I just think the numbers are going to be too good yeah. um, to really avoid. You could, uh, this, th there will be, and I, and I actually um, stated this incorrectly last quarter where they have to show their losses on the, the P and L sheet. Um, they don't have to show their gains, but they have to show their losses. I think it's absolutely stupid. For uh, Bitcoin? For Bitcoin, I'm sorry. Yeah, for Bitcoin. So that actually should show up negative. But if it sells off, next quarter is the quarter we're in. Bitcoin's on fire. Yeah. So you're not going to show a loss. Right. So if that actually sells off, which I doubt it will because it's already, I think it's expected. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say it's like a loss for like 70 million or something like that, 65 to 70 million, which is not nothing. Um, but now it's like back 
so much higher than I know. I know. So if if that sells off because of that, you should feel confident going in because yeah. oh my god, that's not an actual, that's not a realized loss. No. And so um, that's the one thing that I am keeping my eye on. Obviously, supply chain, but I think they're doing better than everybody else. So I think that's going to be the story. Now it's also going to see how it's the how the earnings is ran without Elon, which it could go either way because you're like, are you going to get kind of the PC responses? Whereas Elon was really risky. Like he could say some dumb stuff or he could say some really prominent stuff, but we'll see. There's a lot of, there's a lot of good things on the horizon to feel bullish on Tesla for the long term, but it's certainly running hot into this earnings. And I expect it into Wednesday to continue to run hot. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but that, that Wednesday after hours when we're live, that's going to be awesome. Um, there was something else I wanted to touch on as far as that was concerned, and now I forgot. Tesla or? Yeah, just Tesla. Well, while you're thinking about that, somebody had asked about Bitcoin, obviously, since I just mentioned Bitcoin. Um, had a hell of a move. Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin, oh. Ethereum. Yeah, go ahead. Um, remember, we may mention that uh, Tesla, uh, that was our bold prediction for the year, for 2021. We said Tesla to 1,000. Yeah. We made mention of that last December. We said Tesla to 1,000 by the end of 2021. It was looking dicey halfway through this year. If this earnings blows it out of the water, and they increase guidance and all that good stuff. Yeah, I think a thousand's a, a shoe in. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Especially because they're when, when they release their projections for next year, their delivery numbers. It's going to be their first million dollar million delivery year. Yeah, and it's not even going to be a million. It's going to be minimum like one point one, one point two million vehicles. So I think just that psychological number alone can push that. Right. Yeah. Can push that to a thousand dollars a share. Easy. Um, but it, they're doing so much good stuff. Now there are, I don't know how much this plays, but Cybertruck has been, they've actually, um, they keep pushing it back. They keep pushing it back. And I think there's going to be like, it's going to get worse before it gets better as far as the news of Cybertruck. Yeah. But I feel like that's kind of been baked in. And to that point, I don't even know if anybody really, how much they really care that much. Semi news would be awesome. Um, no, that would be awesome. You're right. I, I would actually be more excited about that than anything else. Yeah, me too. Um, Because that should have had, happened as well by now. Yep. Um, a key date to think about if there is a dip, November 18th or 19th are the EV awards. And I believe Tesla's in like four of the nine. Um, it was on Tesla Daily. But that could be like a surprise if there's a sell-off. Or if there's a run-up, it doesn't matter. That could be an interesting catalyst because if they take home some rewards, Rivian's in it, Lucid's in it, Ford Lightning's in it. So those awards actually could potentially, you know, like bode well for a company like Tesla. If they sweep and get those four four out of four awards, that's something that could get them back on the move. How can they be in in the running for an award if the, if the vehicle hasn't even been created yet? That's a great question. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's, I actually don't know. That's huh. a great question. That's interesting. Okay. Because like the lightning yeah. isn't out yet. Right. Uh, is Rivian out yet? I don't I don't think they've made any sales yet. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. I know they're like pre orders and all that, but like at physical. Yeah, because the cyber truck's on there, but like the cyber truck is Yeah. It's just like sentiment. <laughs> oh, greatest, greatest looking poster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but Eric's Carl did ask about crypto. I want to touch on that really quick. Yeah. Um Bitcoin broke over 6K, 60K. Uh, Ethereum's trying to get over 4K. What are your thoughts about sentiment as far as crypto is moving forward? The Bitcoin ETF actually launches this week. It's been all over the news. Thoughts on Bitcoin and, and Ethereum? The launch of the Bitcoin is obviously a big deal, and I think that that could propel Bitcoin higher. You guys remember I mentioned that I think Bitcoin could hit 100K by the end of the year. Certainly seems to be on that trajectory, but anything can happen, of course. So sentiment as far as crypto in general, I think, is quite high. Um, and uh, looking at Ethereum, yeah, man, we're getting closer to that uh, that resistance at around 4,000. Uh, and then it, once it goes through 4,000, we can start to see it march towards those all-time highs of around 44. It's 43.83 is those highs there. You look at Bitcoin, um, you know, I'd made mention back when it popped up over that. Whoops, not this one. I may mention once it popped up over uh, the 200 day moving average that Bitcoin uh, should uh, be pretty bullish. Uh, it struggled there for a little bit, but once it finally made it back over there, man, this thing's continued to rip. It's now at 61,572. Um, so, 
could be potentially forming a, a, a bull flag pattern here on the daily chart for Bitcoin. So, yeah, I think that there's definitely uh, some pretty good stuff here. Once that ETF launches, I would say that Bitcoin does get a really nice boost, even though you can make the argument that it's already starting to be baked in. Yeah. Um, you still you still sticking with your 100,000 prediction by the end of the year? Yep. All right. I'm going to say 75. I'm sticking with that one. You said 50. No, I didn't. No, I did not. It was at we have 50. To pull, we have to pull it back. Yeah, no, no, pull no. that up. It, was, it wasn't at 50 then. It wasn't at 50 then? I did not say 50. I didn't think it was going to be 50 at the end of the year. <laughs> I, I think there's no chance. I don't even know where we would find that, but I know. I'm sure somebody can can pull it up. <laughs> I think 75 was my prediction. As far as okay. That. Okay. You don't believe that? No, I'm just, I don't remember 75. 50K? I'm not saying that I don't believe you. I just don't remember. 50K. That's what I thought. Because yeah. um, it was, it was down, it was, it was low when we made this call. It was the summertime. It was like sitting at like 30. Mm, okay. 30 or 35. Um, yeah. It was, was it the summertime? I thought it was like two or two months ago. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Ethereum. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said 5k for Ethereum. Bust. I thought I said 50k and 5k. Maybe not. Okay. But Ethereum 5k I think is still within reach. Oh yeah. yeah. Um so we'll see. Uh Alan said I said 50. Did I say 50? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well I'll stick with 50 if that's what you well, said. You're not wrong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, if you guys played that 50 for sure. <laughs> um yeah, so <laughs> I'm just laughing at these comments. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm waiting for institutions to start getting on board with Ethereum. Come on, guys. And honestly, I've been recently more bullish on Bitcoin. I've actually increased my position in Bitcoin, which I wasn't adding to it. Yeah. Um, but I certainly think that it's going to be stronger in the year. And I think that next year is going to be a great year for Bitcoin. Yep. As long as there's no, I mean, honestly, you know, we had the China news and like, I don't know what else, obviously there could be regulation around it, but I feel like kind of there's more institutional comfort around Bitcoin and crypto as well, a whole. Yeah. You know, it was what over the weekend or towards the end of the week last week, uh, that, uh, the announcement was made that, you know, the U S is the top producer of, um, the top miners yeah. are in the U S now where it was in China. So the crazy part is, is that um, so much regulation had come down on uh, those mining in China for uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin specifically. They left China to come back to the U.S. Yeah. Uh, to make it happen here. So uh, very interesting stuff uh, as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Um, well, we'll keep an eye on it. Guys, I was right. Bitcoin at 50K. I'm sticking with 50. <laughs> I, believe, I believe you guys that you said it. So we'll see how it ends the year. Um, and we'll certainly be doing more bold predictions about that towards the end of the year. I can't believe this year is almost over. I know, it's wild. But speaking of being over, this show is over. <laughs> guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. If you guys at least hit that thumbs up on the way out. If you haven't checked it out already, hit that join button next to subscribe. You can become part of the channel, uh, the Chaos Crew, a channel membership. It costs $4.99 a month. You get a watch list from us every single day before the market opens. Gives you a little bit of snapshot of what we're looking at, what we think could be making the biggest moves out there in the market. If you guys want to check that out and support the channel, we certainly would appreciate it. And that's going to do it for us. We'll be back again with you at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Bye. Bye.